This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. doing up here in the attic? The comet it went off. There's nothing to watch. <laughs> Come, net. Everything's 3D Hollywood today. I remember back when I was, I was your age, we used to just uh, get our old TV set, no satellite hookups or anything, just took our signals out of the air. But wasn't that dangerous? Well, that was, of course, uh, before the uh, Surgeon General found a link between uh, TV signals and cancer. That was before your time. Remember some old 2D shows, though? Uh, some were even in black and white. Wow! Of course, that was uh, before President Turner put that in false colorization law through in the 20s. My shirt's been really boring. They weren't even interactive. Uh, don't be so sure about that. There were some great shows back then. Oh, wait a minute. Let me look at this. Mm. Ooh, what? what's that? Oh, it's called a VCR. <laughs> Uh, see, back before all the video was put directly into computer memory in the comm net, people used to tape shows. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, there's, there's a tape already in here. Let me let me hook this up here. Let me see what we got. Uh, oh, ooh, oh, damn radiation. <coughs> Come back with us to the 60s and 70s, the dwelling place of the lost generation. An era whose heroes, role models, and very lives were molded and formed by weekly installments of favorite television programs. Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. Welcome to the vast wasteland. Welcome, Welcome home. home. Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. I'm your host, Mark Schmidbar, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. And we're here on our beginning of our second season talking about 60s and 70s television. We couldn't be more proud and pleased. Uh, before we jump into the festivities, just want to tell you, as usual, our schedule remains the same. Tuesdays at 6, Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 here on ACTV Cable 21. Also, uh, if you want to write to us, uh, write to Vast Wasteland, Box 15, 15, 26, Columbus, Ohio, Four three two one five. Well, tonight on Vast Wasteland, uh, we uh, go into something. We're, we're now in October. We're uh, moving toward Halloween, and it's time for shows that go bump in the night. The, the anthology series of the '60s and '70s that really were weird kind of stuff. Weird, weird. TV. And let's go on to Wilbert with our first point for the evening, Wilbert. Okay, well, by golly. Beat you to it, beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, killed you, I know. Okay. Well, there were, there were quite a few of these anthology series. There, um, maybe a couple of them really stood out, but I'll, I'll go through and mention a few of the others here. Why don't you go um, through and mention a few of those? I think I'll go through and mention a few of the others. Okay. <coughs> oh, oh, that'll sound real nice. Okay. <coughs> One Step Beyond actually began in... Um, 1959, but it did um, carry over into the 60s, and so um, I'll mention that. I, I don't really remember One Step Beyond all that well. Um, I might have seen a couple episodes probably on reruns, well, most definitely on reruns. Since it was in 59, I was only born in 58, and like, I wouldn't really remember seeing the original ones, but I did remember seeing some of the reruns. <laughs> well, that was, uh, that was originally called Alcoa Presents. Ooh. Alcoa Presents One Step Beyond. Okay. Uh, so that was a completely different kind of, one of those 
So it was really a holdover from the 50s of the single sponsored anthology program, like General Electric Theater and Craft Playhouse and so forth. And some of these stories actually dealt with um, real life kind of um, things. Like I see one here, the Peter Herko story. He was a, an actual guy. But, um, a lot of them were just things that were kind of just slightly off center, kind of make you think, you know, just a little, a little strange. And then um, another one called Thriller, which I really don't remember at all, <laughs> which was in the 60s. Well, it ran from 60 to 62, actually. And uh, by golly, it looks like they had Vincent Price here. and Well, not Vincent Price, Peter Lips. Boris. Um, Vincent Price did the other one. Okay. <laughs> Boris, Boris Karloff. Just like Vincent Price, only different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. One of those. Anyway, um, I just don't remember this one at all, although I know a lot of people have seen it, and it's, this was like really weird stuff. Scary things, boys ooh. and girls. Ooh, ooh scary kids. <laughs> but then um, one of the big ones, one of the big ones, probably one of the big ones. <laughs> was it one of the big ones? I think it was one of the, the big only ones. One We're of looking the, one at, of the big um, ones. It was one of the big ones. One of the big ones. We're looking at um, Twilight Zone. There you go. Twilight Zone. Yeah, that's one of the big ones there, with Rod Serling. This was Rod Serling's big one. We're going for, <laughs> we're going for the award. We're going to ask Mrs. Serling big. about that. We'll have a quiz later in the Because Rod had been in TV for a while there. He'd been writing scripts and things, and then he got together and decided to do this show, and um, they said, okay, go ahead. And it just really took off. Now, this was, this was off-center shows. This was scary things. This was science fiction. This well, I think we've all weird heard. stuff. This was... All of them, they're all together there. <laughs> what age did you start watching Twilight Zone? Gosh, I probably started watching Twilight Zone before I even knew what an age was. It, it was like... Gee, they didn't give you birthday parties, did they? <laughs> it was like, this was one of the first shows I really remember seeing. Yeah, me too. Twilight Zone, this was, this was great. And one of the, um, let me see if I can remember one of the first ones that I ever remember on Twilight Zone. Gosh, I can't. <laughs> it was just I like... I can't remember the first one, but, but I was like young, like um, probably eight eight something around in there and it was like one of those shows you snuck to watch well, because you knew mom and dad didn't want you watching that weird stuff so for me it was like ooh, i'm getting away with something exactly. <laughs> it was much. that and outer limits were like that because they were on late right you could probably only see them on fridays or saturday nights when you were allowed to stay up late because you're not going to school so it was like Ooh, they don't know I'm staying up watching this. <laughs> well, now, well, now we have the obligatory question. Favorite Zone episodes. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm. Hey. <clears throat> I know one right off. I, I'm trying to find it. Burgess Meredith. Well, Burgess Meredith. <coughs> he, did, he did quite a few episodes. Yeah. Well, Time it one, up at last. Yeah. The, the, that one. Right. Where, he <laughs> where, where, is the, where he's the librarian. Well, not or, Mr. No, he's, B. Like, he's, a, he's like a businessman or something. And, well, uh, books are his thing. Right. And he's he reads book books all the time, and, and he never has time enough to read books, and he just reads any time he has a chance. And what he does is he, oh, he works at a bank. Yeah, that's he's right. in a bank. And yeah. so at lunchtime, he sneaks into the vault just so he could be alone to read his books. And the vault door closes, and nuclear war ensues, but he survives, and he's the only one left on earth supposedly and, he so happy. And, and so he so he's making this big thing he's got these piles of books in the, on the you know on the steps of the destroyed library and i'm going to read this pile and i'll read this pile and and then he slips and his glasses fall off and it's the only <laughs> pair of glasses he has oh and it was horrible Not enough and it scared me and it scared me boy it scared you <laughs> oh yeah i was like it was Why like i like mom i want a second pair of glasses <laughs> <laughs> i want them <laughs> ready to go in case something like this happens. In case of nuclear war, <laughs> exactly. put them in a little lead right. box. Right, <laughs> exactly. I want them ready to roll. <laughs> okay, you know let's see. Um, there's, um, well, Bur Burgess Meredith, he had like at least a couple more episodes. Oh, he yeah. had one where um, he, these, um, I guess it was like Martians came down and gave him super strength. And so he was able to, he was just had all the super strength for like, I don't know, a few hours, if not a full day. It was like just before he got to go on TV with it, um, the strength was gone. But he was able to do a lot of things. But then, after that, these Venusians came down and gave him a super brain. So he was like able to brain. figure things out. And it was, it was just, they kept doing it. Okay, Mr. Dingle the Strong, that's yeah, the, that's that was that episode. Right. And then there's, um, gosh, I cannot find this. Anyway, it was one where Bill Moomy was um, 
this kid who could make things happen, he like made he just makes scary things. They, when they did Twilight like Zone, the movie, movie. they, they, they the redid yeah. that right, one. They redid the whole thing. But, uh, and actually, they had Billy Mooney in, in that episode. Mm -hmm. But um, this one, they was, he was just a little kid, and he, was, he lived in the country. And I remember the last thing he did was he made his uncle or somebody into a jack-in-the-box. And he was just real scary. And they told him to wish it out into the cornfield, or wish it away. So he wished it out into the cornfield. And you never got to see it, but you saw the shadow of it. Now, that one scared me, because you see this shadow of a jack-in-the-box out in the cornfield. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a big jack in the box and it used to be his uncle so you know it's a real guy and it's it was just scary oh Bill oh, mummy. oh we're being we're being told it's billy billy mummy mummy even though he mummy. only has one m in my there mummy. i yeah, always mummy. thought it was mummy myself we'll, we'll discuss <laughs> hobbits later yeah well, that's it's hobbits but right so that's, that's a that's a whole I mean, that's a whole nother hole in the ground yeah <laughs> we have going forever so Okay. Well, but. before we uh, certainly before we leave zone, we had a uh, friend of mine said you have to mention this. Or uh, is I can't remember what? the name of the episode. Or what? What's he going to do? I don't do? know. I'm not afraid. Kill me. I don't know. Uh, the episode where the uh, the guy gets the book and uh, the aliens are like uh, oh. the aliens show up and they're like uh, he's like a. Uh, translator and he's trying to figure out what this book means the, the episode is called to serve man yeah that, that i should have remembered that and uh it turns out that yep the name of the, the book is to serve man and no they're not gonna help man they're gonna cook man it's, it's a, a cook cookbook book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it got the uh, who was it um it wasn't ted cassidy it was the other guy richard keel i think was the it might have been Ted Cassidy. Though. One of those interchangeable. One of those interchangeable <laughs> tall guys. Who was the alien, and he he's he's laughing, and the guy's trying to say, "It's a cookbook! It's a cookbook!" And he's closing the spaceship. Ha 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 ha! He'll never get out now. Because everybody's like going to the other <laughs> planet because this this is a great deal and everything's wonderful and they're gonna help us so much and it's like, no, you fools! You're gonna they're gonna you're cook gonna be dinner. And it's like they took this they, they took this episode and they turned it into a whole series. The was b actually probably <laughs> based on this series because yeah. they they put to put all the people in a spaceship and they took them away <laughs> mm -hmm. pretty much the same darn thing all from this one episode of course there's the nightmare at twenty thousand feet which yeah. is one of my favorites william shatner where you got william shatner in one of his multiple appearances on twilight zone yeah. and he's he's a guy who's he doesn't like to fly anyway but yet he's got to fly and he's in there and he's nervous anyway he looks out the window and here's this ugly gremlin looking at him <laughs> Got his lip all turned up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all this fuzzy hair, his fuzzy body, and he's out there ripping up the wing on the airplane. <laughs> and he's like, nobody believes him. Right. And so he finally gets a gun and yeah, shoots that's the thing. William Shatner can't act. <laughs> yeah, gets yeah, a, I wouldn't believe him either. <laughs> they get a gun and shoot him, and it's like they had to wheel him away. And it's like, uh, that one, you didn't really... Well, you did get to see the wing, and there was, like, some damage. But when they did the movie... It was like, there was a lot of damage on the wing. <laughs> well, they had better special effects. Well, this is true. They, <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Well, there's... Certain, and certainly the, uh, one more, the uh, episode Eye of the Beholder. Ah, yeah. Like, yeah. Almost, yeah, almost, was... almost what you could use as a typical zone episode, pretty much. You know, of the weird twist at the end. It's this, it's this beautiful woman. Well, actually, you don't, you don't know it's a beautiful woman. Right. It's just this, it's all from her viewpoint under the bandages and, and these bandages and so you see these shadows and people are thinking, oh she's horribly disfigured da, 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 da. and uh, they're gonna go on and, and and they try one more operation and it doesn't work but they take out the bandages and she's a fabulous babe and they and the one is like what's the deal and then they switch angles and other doctors are all these horrible looking pig creatures and it's on another planet For real. and it's like i don't know if you can see this I don't know. Can we probably not this one to michael jackson zoom in <laughs> is there any way to zoom on that picture it's or not we don't Ooh, know oh there we oh, go oh, oh, oh they're scary look at them <laughs> there. Ooh. there it is oh That's aren't they the terrible creatures. but a these were the beautiful people yeah <laughs> on this yeah and i think um donna douglas or somebody was like the, wow. the babe <laughs> Yeah. It was Donna Douglas. Yeah, it's Later Ellie May. Ellie May. Ellie May. <laughs> <laughs> she Hard was the believe. babe. It's like, she's the horribly disfigured one, but they send her away with all these other horribly disfigured people who are just like normal people to yeah. us, you know. Well, doesn't she freak when she sees herself? Well, yeah. yeah. She freaks real bad, and she does, and they're all like, what's her problem? <laughs> and they're like, well, okay, well, well, we'll send her to these people, because they're all horribly disfigured, too, and it's just like normal guys. So right. it's, yeah. it's okay. And then we realize that. That it's was all one, just that was one of my weird. Favorites. I thought that it's was all just perspective. <laughs> That's right. Perspective. That one made me laugh. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you go back and look at it, sure, but sure. that first time you see it, <coughs> excuse me. So you me. guys were scared by Twilight Zone? 
You were it, it had some, it had some well, that scary one things. Episode. That was my big. You gotta look. I'm, I'm like four and yeah, five exactly. looking at this show exactly. here. Until I was older. Exactly. I was like, what? Eight or nine? <laughs> hey, here's, here's, I had years on you. Here's Richard Keel with his big head and that deserved man episode. <laughs> Pretty exciting. Woo! Look at that. Oh, <laughs> woo! There's that the big head. The big head in the episode <laughs> Deserve Man. The big headed tall alien. Not that he wasn't tall. This head has an extra six or seven inches sure, to it. <laughs> he needed it too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's move right along the here. The other fun That's ones. right. Okay, let me see. There were ones like. Um, outer Limits. Well, okay. You gotta move right I into like the big outer one. Limits. The Outer Limits. There's, there's and that. I used to believe they were taking over my TV. <laughs> yeah, that, they had that great and do not attempt to adjust your television. Oh, I wouldn't love to touch those knobs anyway. We can, horizontal. we can make it a fuzzy blur or bring it into crystal clarity. <laughs> For the next hour, we'll have control of your whole darn life. <laughs> That's right. So you just better watch. Because we are the outer limits. And there was an episode on there that, that used to just, ooh, let me see if I can find a picture. It was one about um, these darn giant ants. It's called the Zanty Misfits, and they landed in this uh, this southwestern um, base kind of place. And I think it was like a rocket base almost. But anyway, it was like a ghost town, and there were these big ants that had like faces, and they would come around. They'd come around. Their eyes would bowl around, and they'd go going. Zzz, 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 zzz. They'd get on people. They'd they were big ants. <laughs> were they big, big ants? Big ants. And they'd be all over these people. And you find out, and so the people all got together at the base, and they and they pretty much killed them. They'd stomp on them, they'd shoot them, whatever they, they did to kill them. They would the set them on fire, whatever. And hey. so, and you, they get a message from space saying, "Yeah, we knew you'd do it. By golly, you darn Earthlings, you kill everything that you get a hold of. These were our prisoners. We couldn't get rid of them. We sent them to you. <laughs> we want something destroyed. We'll send it to Earth. Because we knew you could do it, you darn Earthlings. Okay, which one you think's creepier, Outer Limits or Twilight Zone? Oh, um, outer limits, without oh, yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Because they tried to be creepier. Yeah, right. they were creepier. I mean, there were there were a lot of episodes of Twilight Zone that were almost that were like humorous. Yeah. Episodes. Oh yeah. I mean, and you really didn't see that in, in Outer Limits at all. It was like we like had to have the, to freak you the out monster of the week. And there's and there's something interesting about uh, Outer Limits is the fact that that uh, when ABC and it is ABC, right? Yeah. Who uh, uh, when they accepted the show, it was on the premise that. We want to see monsters, and we want to see a monster within the first five minutes. <laughs> and that's how, so and, you, and if you watch the episodes, most of the episodes, there's a monster in the first five minutes. Because they said, oh, it's a monster show, we can get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. And so well, a great well, deal. Outer Limits and Zone, I saw rerun, you know, it was total rerun time mm -hmm. for me. I, you know, I wasn't <laughs> conscious, I guess, <laughs> during those <laughs> early years when they were actually on. I think that's what added to the creepiness, though, that they were on late at night. Yeah. And they were kind of in my household as kind of forbidden, forbidden viewing. <laughs> You'll not stay up and watch that young lady have nightmares and keep the rest of us up all night? <laughs> Heck no. <laughs> well, by the way, I just want to tell the uh, Columbus audience that uh, uh, until recently, Zone was uh, uh, the exclusive rights for this area were owned by uh, uh, Channel 28. Mm -hmm. But that just recently lapsed. So when 43 in Cleveland, if you have cable, and if you don't have cable, you Too can't bad. be watching our show. So uh, well, we're going to assume you have house. cable if you're watching our show. <laughs> and uh, so 43, when they start showing Zone, and they do every once in a while, we will we'll actually be able to see it, and they won't black it out. So we couldn't be yeah. more pleased about that. Hey, couldn't be happier. Be happy. <laughs> All right. They were just, my goodness, those Zanty Miffets, they, they just, they just kind of stick there. That's... Like one of my episodes, I could just remember. And then when they showed it again, um, Channel 34 had it for a while. Um, back in the early 70s or so, they had it. And I'd see those, there's those darn zannies. <laughs> <coughs> that was just great. My goodness, that was just one of my favorite episodes on um, Outer Limits. Well, should we like chug into like one of my real favorites that I saw when it was done? I guess yeah. we all saw when it was done. I guess we all did. Yeah. Night, Night gallery. gallery. Oh, there yes. you go. That was like the show, um, Rod Serling's second venture into doing the um, but, but anthology kind of thing. 60, was, no, no, 70. Yeah, 70. I, was gonna say, 73. I, was, I was a little older when that one was 70 to 73. I was allowed to watch it. <laughs> now, the thing about that was that uh, Rod Serling uh, wanted to do another series, but the network started screwing around with all the scripts, and he said, I don't have anything to do with this series. And 
The network said, no, we have a contract with you to do the openings. Yeah. So despite the fact he detested the series, most of it, he, would, he had to come on each time and do the opening. Yeah, had neat pictures too. And it, it had some great stories. Yeah. A lot of them were like, um, let me see, they would do like a long one. And sometimes it would be a long one that would last for the whole show. Or then they'd have like, let me see, was it, it was like a, I guess it was an hour show. Mm -hmm. And so they would have like maybe well, some, two. Some two were hour and some were half hour or some sort of deal. Right. Well, it seemed like there was always a couple of stories. Yeah, or somewhere like in that. So they'd have like a long one, maybe a couple long ones. And then they had the little short quick ones, which were some of my favorites. Yeah, I like the, the short, short ones. The short ones were, a lot of the short ones were good. Like there's one about, um, well, these, this, um, couple they're sitting down they're they're like going to bed or something and you hear this voice in the back daddy i want a drink of water and the guy's trying to ignore it you know and the wife says daddy <laughs> come on he's your child oh all right so he goes into the kitchen gets the water goes in and gives it to the kid the kid's this giant frankenstein monster and he's in the crib thank you daddy takes the water and splashes it over his <laughs> yeah. face because he misses his mouth that was just one of the quick ones, one of the quick funny ones. Hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember that one. I find it humorous. Yeah, it's not humorous. That, was, that one was just one of my favorites. Uh, they were just a lot of real good ones. Like they had the one about the, um, let me see, it was like a, a Nazi war criminal who was trying to get away. And he'd go, to this, he'd go to this art gallery, and he'd see this picture, this picture of somebody fishing. Mm -hmm. And he just loved this picture. He'd like, he'd think about it, think about it, think about it. And he would be into the picture. And he'd be in there, he'd be fishing. He'd, he'd um, peaceful, quiet. There's nobody chasing him or anything. He's just real quiet and peaceful. And then it finally got to the, down to the time where they were actually people chasing him, because they realized who he was. And he's running to the art gallery, and uh, he goes in there to the place where the picture is. He says, let me get into the picture. Let me get into the picture. Let me get into the picture. And he screams. And the people come into the gallery. They're looking all around. They can't find him anywhere. And they're looking around. And they see this picture of uh, some uh, singer, somebody who's been crucified. And it's got this horrible expression of pain on his face. And it's in the same place where the fishing picture used to be. And they had moved the fishing picture someplace mm. else. <laughs> and so the guy's the up here. that one pay back through a bitch or what? <laughs> yeah, something like that. It could have been for, for all we know. But that's, that was just a, um, a creepy one. And, and Night Gallery was actually, uh, now that it's in, when it's in syndication, they're showing Night Gallery along with episodes from another series, Sixth Sense. Yeah, that they're was They're actually, they're re-editing them. And supposedly, they well, I mean, According, according to this one critic in one of my books, they were like, oh, they, they, they took this show Sixth Sense, and it was an hour-long show, and they made it into a half-hour long uh, for syndication purposes, and that makes it into this horrible thing, because it doesn't make any sense in a half-hour format. Well, it didn't always <laughs> make a whole lot, and besides, Gary Collins is such a slow actor. <laughs> yeah, you really can't. It's like, let's, let's speed it up. <laughs> I always like the sixth sense. Gary. <laughs> yeah, let's go, Gary. Let's go. Come on. Let's I like go the, the, the night gallery shows always seem to have, like, it was like the opening and everything gave it such a sense of, of mystery and, mm -hmm. you know, it was intriguing. I don't know why I like the sixth sense. Probably because no one else in the house liked it, so <laughs> it's a power struggle thing. Okay, so. let's see. Here's uh, another episode of. Um, oh. Oh, another zone episode? Well, another stick you in another the night, night gallery, gallery. And you can't get out. <laughs> <coughs> oh, Flip man, side of Satan. Tragically trapped. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, there's a um, a disc jockey who who dies and he. Well, no, wait. No, he doesn't die. He goes. He gets transferred to this new station. That's um. I guess it was like. W-H-E-L-L -L or something like that. W-H-E-L-L. <laughs> uh, -L. And he's in there and he's L setting it up and everything and he, he's, <laughs> he's putting on records and it always playing something demonic. Regardless of what record he puts on, there's always something demonic playing. And he's no, trying to figure it out. Here, and he's trying to, he's going forward. around, he's trying to fix it and he gets electrocuted. It's like, it's like DJ hell. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a DJ, they didn't like him anymore so they sent him to this station and he gets electrocuted and that's, that's how they oh, got rid of DJ. It was, it was like a wild one. And there's one where, um, let me see, John Aston goes to, well, he, he goes to hell. He dies, he goes to hell, and he um, says he wants to meet the devil and everything, but he's like, um, he says, okay, so you meet the devil, and the devil says, well, okay, well, here's where you're going to be. 
And, um, yeah. <laughs> he, ends up, he, he's, he, he wants to see the fire, the brimstone, and everything. He ends up with these old couple that show on slides yeah. for their vacations. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, man, bummer, bummer. Incredible, like a network executive being put at ACTV. <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Da, 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 da. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, what goodness. about, like, the <laughs> ultimate favorite of mine, and my kids love it, um, Alfred Hitchcock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. I like the one where... The woman kills her husband with some frozen meat <laughs> and then cooks it and serves it to the cops, destroying the evidence. Mm -hmm. well, That's just so clever. <laughs> well, you see, you see both uh, Zone and, uh, and Hitchcock have both come back now. Mm -hmm. uh, at least in, they were on there for a while and now uh, USA picked up one or did they pick USA's up both? USA's got Hitchcock. And, uh, and Zone just kind of bopped all around the place. It was on CBS for a while. And it was in syndication all over the place, and uh, I remember from uh, from a Hitchcock one of the um, one of the uh, episodes one of the newer episodes of Hitchcock was I believe Robert Conrad was playing this washed up actor. Okay. And William Shatner. No, no. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was no, Rob and Parker Parker, Parker Stevenson, Stevenson was, was this other guy That's who was going to replace him. That one's beautiful. And he's like uh, he he's like he realizes his career is over unless he gets rid of this young guy, so he kills him. And they show how he, how, I mean, without actually showing the gore, they show, like, the expressions on his well, face and all this. And he chops chainsaw. the guy apart with a chainsaw, and then, and then it dissolves him in acid, but the only thing left is the guy's head. And then, uh, he sticks and then the, the guys bucket. from the studio show up and say, we want to give you the part, and they're trying to get in. He, and he hides the head in, a, in, in, in an ice bucket. <laughs> and they're like, let's have a drink, yay! Yeah. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I freak the kids out real bad by having them sit down and watch this show. And uh, I'm sure they'll never get to an ice bucket as long as they live. <laughs> oh, Mom, there was a head in the ice bucket. No, no. <laughs> and we certainly seem to see uh, e even new series like uh, like Friday the 13th, the series, and, and The I Hitchhiker, Tales from the Dark Side, all stuff. Tales the from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. Well, and uh, Tales, Tales from the Dark, from the dark side. side, yeah. Yeah, all these shows come up in the 80s, it's, so it's certainly... Uh, the anthology format still seems to be viable, at least in syndication. Very much the so. The networks yeah. don't seem to want to want to touch it with a ten-foot pole, but uh, but it certainly seems like uh, seems like it uh, is uh, yeah, I think catching it, back on. I think and the fans be... just love them. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think Tales from the Crypt really borrows from the uh, the Hitchcock and the uh, Rod Serling mm -hmm. thing, having someone intro the shows. Well, anyways. We're given the signal that we got to be getting out of here. So uh, next uh, time on Vast Wasteland, we're going to talk about, uh, oh, what are we talking about? Oh, darn the luck. Uh, we're talking, oh, gimmicky detectives <coughs> next time on Vast Wasteland. So uh, uh, for all of us here at Vast Wasteland, we'll see you next time. And now here are some highly uh, uh, exciting and uh, high-tech high credits. Tech credits.